Al, I did my doctorate in neuroscience. I've been very interested in free will. And in recent times, there is a very strong movement in brain science that seems to indicate that free will is an illusion. What are the experiments, and why do you disagree with them? Okay, I'll, uh, I'll start with uh, an experiment that really got the ball rolling. It's by a neuroscientist named Benjamin Libet. What Libet thought he showed was that the brain makes decisions about a third of a second before the person becomes aware of the decisions. And uh, he thought that in order for free will to be involved, a conscious process had to be generating the decisions. But if the brain makes them before you become aware of them, then the conscious process isn't generating the decision. Okay, that's the basic idea. How did now, it work? Yeah, and the experiment worked like this. So the task subjects had was to flex a wrist whenever they felt like it, and then after they flexed, they would report where a spot was on a very fast clock when they first felt the urge, intention, wish, will, decision uh, to flex. And they were hooked up to two machines. So they were getting EEG readings from the scalp, and they were getting uh, muscle motion readings with uh, an electromyograph. And uh, what he discovered is that when subjects were regularly reminded not to plan in advance when to flex, and when after the fact they said, yeah, I never planned in advance, they had to flex at least 40 times, by the way, um, you got an EEG ramp up that started at 550 milliseconds before the muscle burst. That's about a half, half a, a second, second before the muscle burst that was measured by the electromyogram. Well, that's a long time in brain terms, half a second. Oh, it sure is. Now, the average time of first reported awareness of this mental event, the decision or intention or whatever, was 206 milliseconds before the muscle About burst. a fifth of a second. That's right. So there's a lag of over a third of a second between the EEG ramp up and this time of reported time of first Which awareness. seems to indicate that the brain, without our conscious knowledge, is already planning, and then I'm suddenly aware of it, as if my consciousness, my so-called free will, is, uh, is sort of a froth. Yeah. <laughs> it's just kind of riding along, but has no impact on really what's happening. That's, yeah, that's exactly right. So uh, his thought is the brain is making these decisions about a third of a second before you become aware of them. So it's making them unconsciously. Free will has to be a conscious process, so free will's not involved. He actually thought that free will could step in after you became conscious of the intention and veto it, but uh, we'll set that aside for now. It's sort of a secondary point. Um, now, my own view is that there are at least three serious problems with getting to his conclusion uh, from the data. But here's one. I'll talk mainly about one. What are the three? Oh, okay. So the first one, which I will talk about is, the question anyway is, so what is correlated with the beginning of the ramp up about half a second before the muscle burst? Okay. And the second one is, once we figure out the answer to the first question, is what's going on at that early time, about half a second before the muscle burst, sufficient to cause the motion or not? Mm -hmm. Or is it just some part of the causal chain that may or may not, may or may not produce the, uh, the flexing? And then third, how accurate are these reported times, mm. the reported times of first awareness? Now, I'll talk about the, the first question. So what is going on at minus 550? Libet thinks that a decision has been made then. And uh, now, it's supposed to be a decision to do it now. Um, so one question to ask in this connection is, how long does it take a decision to do a thing now, or an intention to do a thing now, to generate a muscle burst. Now, one way to get evidence about that, about intentions in particular, is with uh, reaction time tests. So suppose in reaction time tests, what happens is you, people know what they're supposed to do when they get the go signal. And it might even be flex a wrist. And uh, they get a warning signal telling them sooner or later they're going to get the go signal. Then when they get the go signal, they do what they're supposed to do. What the go signal results in, that is what detecting it results in, is an intention to do a thing now, the thing that you're supposed to do. Um, so what you could do is get evidence about the amount of time between go signal 
and muscle burst. But what you'd want to do is get that evidence in a scenario where the subjects are looking at a Libet clock. Because if you're looking at this fast clock and trying to keep track of things, it's going to divide your attention and it's going to slow down reaction time. Mm -hmm. Okay, So I actually looked for a study of this kind and I found one. And it was done by Patrick Haggard and Elena Magno, I think was the second author. Subjects were watching a Libet clock. Uh, they were supposed to click a mouse button when they heard a tone. And the mean time between the tone and the muscle burst was 231 milliseconds. Now, a fifth of a second to get. Yeah. Close. Now, if what happens is that uh, there's a detection of the signal, that causes an intention to do it now, which then causes a muscle burst, then the time between the intention and the muscle burst is going to be shorter, significantly shorter, than 231 milliseconds because detecting the tone takes time, sure. and then responding to it with this pretty much automatic intention takes a little bit of time, too. So it could be, then, that what we have there back at uh, minus 550 milliseconds is a little part of a causal process that may or may not eventually result in a decision to flex. That is, it's really ambitious to claim that what's happening that early is that the decision is already made. Now, there's another study of this kind, but it's done with uh, fMRI, with measurements of blood flow. Uh, it's done by John Dylan Haynes and a guy named Soon and some other people. And what they do is they have people, their task is, oh, you press this button or you press that button, and it's up to you. Don't press the same button too many times in a row. You know, um, And the people are doing this sort of thing, and they're taking these, uh, they're scanning brains and taking readings. And after a lot of effort, they can predict with 60% accuracy on the basis of stuff that's happening seven seconds or so in advance of a button press, which button they'll press. And this is supposed to be bad news for free will, too. But the prediction is only 60% reliable. And what may be going on at this early time is just that people have a slight unconscious bias now toward one button or the other on the next trial. And it may be that the bias contributes to there being about a 60% chance that they'll go this way in this case. But what does that have to do with free will? It may still be up to the person uh, which button he presses later. He might be slightly inclined in a certain direction, but not go in that direction. And that's utterly consistent with the 60% success rate figure. So I think that these studies haven't detected things like decisions or intentions you know, that long in advance, although they probably have detected things that might make some causal contribution to decisions or intentions that come about later. So the research is interesting, but it's not this positive on, uh, on eliminating free will. Yes, true. And one more point I might make about that is these scenarios are very different from real-world scenarios where something important hangs on your decision. So it's flex now or flex now. <laughs> you know, nothing really hangs on it. Or uh, this button or that when nothing hangs on it. And so it would be hard to generalize from findings in scenarios like this where you're indifferent about what you do to scenarios where you care a lot about which decision you make, like the decision to accept the job or reject it. You know, it's important to you. It's a life change. There's that problem, too.